So this new feature is actually part of Visual D-Day 2021 build 6240, which is the newest one at the time of this video recording. So you definitely need to go get the latest version if you want to play with this scratch bang feature. Um, so what is it? Well, it's not really a complicated feature. It's actually basically a sample load feature with build and play and then unload uh, and the unload goes back to the originally playing track on the deck. So uh, so not too complicated to understand, but pretty powerful. And of course, this, this was created for Pioneer S11 support, uh, the DJM S11 that came out a few months ago, which had this scratch bank built in. So it needed to be in Visual DJ uh, as well, so that that particular mixer could be supported. But the good thing is that in a Visual DJ, it can be used with anything. So uh, this is what we're going to do in this video because I do not own an S11. So um, what you probably want to do is go watch a few videos on the S11 and see what how they're using the, the scratch bank uh, because that's probably uh, uh, the way to do it if you want to do some some crazy uh, turntable list kind of thing. Um, so this is just uh, my few ideas uh, on the feature based on that it's available for anything in Visual DJ. How is this new scratch bank feature implemented in the software? Well, it's actually using a pad page and an editor. So I can now select a new pad page that's included called scratch bank. And it has a few banks already that you can select between A, B, C, D. So, so let's try using the B one and then load some samples into it. So I have some samples here, like the very famous R sample. So I'll load that into pad A. And I have the almost as famous fresh one that I'll load into pad B like that. And now when I click it, you can see that it loads and it's ready to play. And also same with the second one, fresh, it loads and it's ready to play. And if I right click any of them, they unload and I'm back to my track that I have up, uh, loaded previously uh, up here. So that's basically how it works. So you can play the track. And load the sample. And unload it and get back to the track. As you could hear, that was not really in time. And we'll get back to that. So that is basically the whole feature. Play your original track that you were already playing. Load a sample. Unload a sample and continue playing the track. One interesting thing here is that that if the if the track is playing when you load a sample here, then the sample plays instantly. But if the track isn't playing, like it wasn't right here, then it just sits there ready for use. So if I right click to unload again, play my track, click the R sample, it plays instantly. Okay. Uh, and this, the same goes for the second thing. So if I go back to my track and I play it and I load the sample and unload it again fast, while the sample is still playing, then the track will continue playing. Like that. That's very important, because you might want to go in and out pretty fast like that. Another place to load it is actually in the editor, instead of dragging and dropping it into it. So if I go into the edit editor, here, you can see I have my scratch bang editor. And it has the four bangs here. And you can set it up a new one if you want to. Give it a name, bank 17, whatever, and it'll be there and ready for use. So uh, if I look at the bank B that I just loaded, what's in here? Well, you can see that it has the R and the fresh sample, haven't given it a color. But what I could do was I could actually set it to play at my first cue point in the sample 
the sample cue point, which is just the same as the track cue point, but that means it'll start from a specific place. So it's easier to get it loaded and playing in time. So I'll do that. So both of them will be at Q1. That actually means that they'll both be red because that's my Q1 default color, but I can overrule one of them if I want other colors. So this one can be yellow like that if I want to. So now the R one should be more in time with the, when I load it and play it like this. Another thing you saw is that I could, I could actually re-trigger it. So instead of just loading it once and playing it, because it has the cue point, I can re-trigger it. Again, if it's already playing, like that. So that's an added benefit of the cue point. Not only will it be in time, you can also re-trigger the sample by using these as, as hot cues in effect. Same with this one, it has to already be playing, or it'll be still on load, but like this. Oh, it wasn't fast enough. Like that. So that's an added feature that you can do. And then right click to go back to the track. So the thing is that when I go back to the track, like if I go into fresh, and unload, it'll go back to the track in the place where I loaded this. So at the timing where I loaded this. So there's no slip mode, there's no hot cue triggering, stuff like that. We'll get back to that later. So that's not really included. But that's basically how you set it up. You drag and drop it in here, or you set it up in the edit, where you can do a few more things apart from actually putting in the file. Let this sample like that. So as much fun as this can be using just the mouse, that's not really how it's supposed to be used. It's supposed to be used with hardware. That's why it's called scratch bank. It's for scratching, real scratching, like with a jock wheel or maybe even a turntable. So I've attached my GTDA 400. And it means now when I look into the drop down here, I get this section up here when I, where I can choose which pad pages I want to make available on the unit. And I'm going to sacrifice the queue loop and then I'm going to instead select the new scratch bank one like that. And now because I've made that little change um, to the, the pad page selection, then if I press the, the shift hot queue, I go into the scratch bank so I can load a sample play it and scratch some top of it if I want to like that and the next one and then I've added two more this one and I can play and this one that's a bit longer and I can click shift and any of them to go out uh, of the loaded mode and back to the track. So if I press play now, I get my track. So that means I can do something like play it, load a sample and scratch it. Unload it and get my track back like that. Of course, this is probably mostly supposed to be done on this opposite deck. So if I go out of this again, and go into the hot cues. So the left side now is just my my, 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 uh, my track playing with hot cues. And then over here, I have the, the samples, like going the first one, like this. So that's ready. So now it's made basically supposed to be cut in like this, right? Something like that. 
So like I explained, this is probably mostly supposed to be done on the non-master track. But you can actually also use it directly on the master track if you want to. Like I did when I demoed the, the, the different samples a second ago. So if I play the track, switch mode. I can load and play the sample. And then go back to the track. And because I did it exactly four bars, it kind of sounded like I got back to the track at the right time, but I just got back to the track at the same time as I loaded the sample. So that's not, probably not really good enough. So there are a few issues with this new feature and it's brand new. So there's room for improvement. So uh, maybe some of these are not issues. Uh, if you wa watch this video sometime in the future, but right now with the first version, there are a few issues, I think. One of them is that if the, the samples run out, you play them to the end, everything stops like I demoed earlier. So if I play a track and kick in the R like this and the R ends and I right click to go back, then the track is stopped too. That's maybe not what I want. So I would like an added feature well, that doesn't need to happen. Of course, you can add space at the end, uh, empty silence space at the end of your samples to avoid this. There's also no, uh, no slip mode or hot cue on exit, meaning that the place where the track gets back is the place where I loaded the sample. So I, if I play the track again, and I go this, you see it simply starts from where I loaded the track, not from where the track would have been. Also, I cannot tell it to, okay, then just trigger hot cue two when you unload the track. That would also be a nice feature. Also by default, you need to use shift to get out of this. Uh, so right here, it's right click and maybe okay, but it's a shift feature. If you use any controller, that's kind of hard to figure out how to do that in the middle of working with all these samples. So maybe another way to get out of it. And uh, so, uh, so I actually uh, made my own to, uh, to, to, do, to, to solve some of these issues right now for myself. So I call that Scratch Bank 2. So that's here. So what's this thing do? Well, it actually lets me start the samples just like before, but then I've sacrificed four spaces down here. Uh, so I don't need the shift to go back. And if I want to, I can go back and trigger a cue at the same time. So now if I load and play the sample, I can actually get back to the original track in time by triggering one of its cue points by using these three buttons. So something like this. And of course, I can use the back button here, so I don't need the shift button. So what more can I do now that I've, I'm using this edited pad page and I'm using my hardware? Well, then first of all, you can see that now I'm in the, the, the scratch bank mode that I have three hot cues. And that's because the hot cues also work, even though I don't use the scratch bank. So I can simply play the track. So it actually does the unload, but since there's nothing to unload, then it just plays the track. But if I load a, a, a sample in the middle of everything, like the long one, and then back to these ones, then it'll trigger the cue, and of course unload the sample, so it'll be something like this. <laughs> So that actually means that now you can get back to the original track in time 
by triggering one of his first three hot cues because I only made three of them because this was of course the regular uh, back or unload if you will. So again as I said previously this is a brand new feature so there are probably some room for improvements. Uh, I already listed some of them and I've tried creating a couple of them by changing and sacrificing these four spaces for slots down here. Um, but there are probably better ways to do it, and I'm sure that Atomix, the creators of Virtual DJ, can do a better job. So I've uh, put in some enhancement requests in the Virtual DJ form. Uh, there's a place there where you can make suggestions for new features. That's what I've done. So there's a link to that in the video description. So please feel free to go in and read it, and feel free to also add something to it. Of course, this may already be have been done if you watch this video in the future. Also in the video description, as always, there are the, the scripts that's been used in this video.